Welcome to episode 241 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and Jeff Gamet, you're back. I missed you, buddy. I'm so glad you're here. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and I really missed you, too. I, yeah. It's been way too long, and that's all me. So oh, I'm well, sorry. That's okay. That. That's okay, but... Uh, Everybody's glad you're back. I'm also glad that uh, Holden Napardo's back uh, as a guest here. How are you doing, Holden? Doing well. Thanks for having me back on. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a, a lot of a lot of stuff this week we've got uh, to talk about. And it always seems like I go to the show notes and I make the comment of the pre-show. I was like, man, there's not a lot to talk about. I'm like, no, I got a full. We have a, we have a full agenda here for you today. Uh, lots of news here and couple a uh, couple topics we're going to hit that we don't normally hit I have a, uh, a streaming services topic and um, uh, and also our in touch with in touch with Mac segment because somebody got a new Mac but we'll find out a little bit more about that later uh, Can't but wait to uh, find out who. I know uh, so let's go ahead and get dig into the news as we, I was, yeah uh, we might uh, <laughs> so let's go dig into the news for this week Um some iPhone users complain of, of iCloud backup issues after updating to iOS 16.3. iOS 16.3 appeared to be impacting the iCloud backup feature for some people who were up, who upgraded to the new software, and that's uh, this was reported uh, actually yesterday this week uh, as we record this. Uh, and lots of complaints in the in the forums and Mac rumors as well as the Apple support communities. Um, impacted users had seen. Uh, automatic iCloud backups disabled and attempting to turn on automatic backups attempted in the following message an unknown error occurred. Don't you love those, that error message? Wow. Please try again later. Uh, and then then back up this iPhone didn't work. You had to toggle it on and off to still deactivate it. So lots of reports. Uh, and it it says that the, iPhone, the bug is going to be addressed in a future update. But for now, you can do manual backups to make sure your data is safe. All that makes me feel real reassuring here. Um, they are working on an update to, with 16.3.1, which we actually talked about last week, but nothing was really official. So I think both of you guys are probably feeling so so great that we don't have automatic backups right now. Hmm. What do you think, Jeff? I'm going to check my phone right now. I was going to do it myself. <laughs> because I thought that my uh, backups were actually happening. Okay. I, I'm not freaking out because I use iMazing. So, uh, because I like to have uh, multiple backups in case something yeah. fails. And iMazing has been doing its thing. So, you know, at least there's that. That's um, a good thing. Yeah. iCloud oh, backup you. is on. And for those who don't know, Mine's just make working. sure you know. Yeah, mine is too. And for those who don't, who, you don't know how to get into there, when you go into settings and you tap your uh, your name uh, at the top there, and uh, then you scroll down and go to iCloud, um, you can go to d- device backups, which is iCloud backup, and then it'll stay, it'll tell you right there with last successful backup right there, and mine was last yesterday at eight forty seven p.m. as we record. And uh, I can back up right now. So, yes, mine's backing up. So I think we're, I'm okay. But uh, it's something you should check out. Very important that you're always backing up your iPhone. And like Jeff said, iMazing is another option if you uh, if you uh, don't want to have a second backup. It isn't a bad idea. A lot of people don't do that. But um, I think I, I do it. I know Jeff does. And I don't know what you do, I'll told. Yeah, I, I can't check mine because I'm using the uh, camera oh, using for – yeah. Oh, yours but... is fine. I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm I'm not worried at all because I I don't use iCloud backups. It seems like it sounds like a weird thing to say, oh. but like every and this is not a safe practice by any means. Um I everything I have is syncing in, in iCloud. I've never had to think about it. I like to set up my phones as new when I get new phones. And I kind of do that every once in a while anyway. I'm like the opposite of a data hoarder. Like if I lost everything, I'd be like, oh, well, I guess I just have to like start from scratch and it's gonna be really nice having a clean phone. Like I'm just like I'm not gonna like yeah. care that much because um, most of the things that like I really care about um, are already sinking somewhere else, and I don't know. It's not, it's not a big deal to me. I don't know. Yeah, I, I so. do like having the iCloud backup uh, because on more than one occasion, I've taken yep. my iPhone into the Genius Bar to get something fixed, and they end up handing me a new phone. And then I can just put in my Apple ID and all my stuff is just magically showing up and the applications I had are just repopulating. Um, but I get where you're coming from, where there there's like a magical Zen thing of, of freeing yourself 
from from worrying about the apps and all the data because it's all syncing anyhow and knowing that if something horrible goes wrong you get to have a fresh start look at it as a gift instead of a pain in the butt yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah that's exactly how i look at it yeah um, especially because I, speaking from experience of having helped people use computers and i got very familiar with some people's file systems because we spent a lot of time learning how to organize files and no one no one knows how to organize files nobody i don't think yeah. anyone on this I, planet knows how to organize files yeah. and it's just a nice opportunity to kind of start from scratch i think myself included i'm not standing on a pedestal being like and i have figured it out yeah. i have no idea no one does um it's to kind of nicely start from scratch but okay like i have this opportunity now to like do my files from the beginning again or at least like my notes app from the beginning again the only thing i'd be like really really upset if i lost was my shortcuts because i have a ridiculous amount of shortcuts that are automating yeah. and running in the background all the time if i lost that i would really lose a lot of productivity because i have like yeah. different focus modes which are basically just like different modes for different times of the day and if i lost that that would be a nightmare but that syncs with the icloud yeah. so i'm not super yeah. concerned about it all right yeah. um, dave well, i actually do have a, a a real thought about this okay go ahead okay I appreciate that we're dealing with incredibly complex operating systems. And there are so many moving parts across all the platforms Apple supports and stuff's going to go wrong. However, there are certain parts of the systems that you should really make sure are not breaking at all. And backup is one of them. Yep. Okay, I'm I done. Tot I totally agree with that. I totally agree. Um, this is very common. You'll hear from game developers a lot is you have to make sure the save system works before you like work on any other bugs. Because if someone doesn't feel like their save file isn't safe, they're going to be anxious all the time playing it. And with the personal information on a phone, yeah, I think that's a really good point, Jeff. Absolutely. Um, uh, just a shout out to, to the chat room here. Uh, that's at youtube.com slash uh, in touch with iOS. Uh, see Guy Cyril. Thanks for being in the, in the chat, Guy and Paul and Ben. Uh, he's here to talk Jeff into buying more stuff. He's oh, been pulling off make that. him go away. Go away, yeah. Ben. <laughs> He's but, been, he's been buying that credit, pulling that credit card out every week for Jeff. So, but he's, I don't, he hasn't bought anything for him. So, oh, um, uh, Ben tried to convince me to buy a Nintendo Switch with an OLED screen <laughs> earlier today. Mm -hmm. You should. They're great. Oh, great! Now you too. <laughs> another seal of approval from Holden. They're very. Oh, good. look at he's got it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> oh my God. So, um, yeah, hey go. everyone, I I have uh, Patreon and buy me a coffee. I'm Jake Gambit on both. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and if you want to help enable these people to uh, convince me to buy a that's right. Nintendo Switch, yeah. well, there you go. There's a special Patreon tier that's three hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> Just one time, <laughs> one time charge. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, move on to the next story here. Um, Apple is going to re-release a revamped HomeKit architecture in iOS sixteen point four. In Apple's upcoming iOS 16.4 update, it will in re reintroduce the revamped HomeKit architecture it originally pulled in December due to widespread issues. Yeah, boy, it was widespread, all right. Um, Backend code that uh, indicates that uh, Apple is ready to reintroduce it, uh, reintroduce it uh, and uh, fix a lot of the bugs that were happening, and they had to remove it. Thank God they did because people were not happy, as I can know, Jeff. You, I don't know if you experienced that problem, but uh, that, that's good to hear that this is finally going to get fixed. I did not experience a problem. Well, that problem is all related to matter specifically, right? Right. Yeah. And I have not done the transition to matter <clears throat> because um, to update many of the devices I have also means that after they're updated, you have to remove them from HomeKit and re-add them. And I oh. have no interest in having to rebuild all of these complex things, automations that I have set up. I'll just live with the with the extra second or whatever it takes for something to happen outside of matter to to avoid having to deal with mm -hmm. all the rest of it. But okay, here's another case where yes, I appreciate it's an incredibly complex system and there's a lot going on and adding in matter support was new, but Apple's been touting this as a big thing, a huge update. And if you're going to roll it out as a as a big new feature that you want everyone to know about, 
maybe you should make sure it actually works right first. <laughs> Especially because yeah. they had issues with this over the betas. Like they had to delay it many times. This has been an issue that this, this new update has been an issue for HomeKit. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. And then add on top of that, the whole Siri with HomeKit problem problems but you know like the the one mm. that so many of us are experiencing where you say hey s lady and then do whatever the home kit thing is and um and your device comes back and says that there's a problem try again in a few minutes and then you just give the command again and it works that's yep. a fun one yeah that is it is um uh Let's uh, go on and move to the next story here. The iPhone 14 Pro is 20% faster than the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra that was just uh, announced by Samsung last week. Uh, and it hasn't even come out in the market yet. Uh, but, you know, this is a Mac rumor, so you always got to hear about these things. Um, according to Beat Geek, Geek, Geek Bench scores for single core performance that was discovered by Compare Dial. Okay, we got to question that. Uh, the, the Galaxy S23... <laughs> Ultra had scored a 1480, where its closest rival, the iPhone 14 Pro, achieved 1874. And they do have the bar graphs here to prove it. Um, yeah, you kind of have to question this. But, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Samsung uh, S23 does have lots of extra cameras. I don't know if we, you'd really need. But, uh, I mean, there, there's nothing. No, this is nothing new for us. I mean, I think we know the iPhone 14 Pro is, uh, the performance is, is, is stellar and really works well. What do you think, Holden? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. I think Apple is always going to be ahead of everyone else with, with with processors. They can make the chips just for them. They don't have to get some stock right. item off. Like, they're always going to be ahead in this regard. And I'm convinced that we're already having monopoly conversations about Apple with like the App Store. We're going to have monopoly conversations about Apple and with hardware within a decade. I'd say, especially if like they go to um, displays and the you know Wi-Fi chips and all that kind of stuff they make in house as well. Like. Because they're so far ahead here, they're so far ahead. It's it's pretty amazing. I think funny enough too, the iPhone 13 is out, out um, outpaces the S23 Plus. That's a, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> like, yeah. and not by a little bit either. It's like midway between the 14 and the, the S23. You know, yeah, or 14 Pro. Having this discussion two years ago, I I would do the thing where I say, well, you know, that's really impressive. But remember, these are just benchmark tests. I'll be impressed when I see the phone outperform all the comp competition in real world use. But now, yeah. uh, hold on, like you said, Apple has gone so far ahead of competitors in this chip space, and uh, and with the ability to to like just build the whole system, yeah. that's a that's an advantage that companies like Samsung just. They, they can't overcome so yeah yeah apple not to the degree that advantage. apple can yeah for sure and um which we call it um a lot of people i've heard this too like why do you need that headroom like it's so much more powerful why, why do you need that and i think for most people it's the longevity of your device increases like you'll get more software updates because there's a higher ceiling to hit before a software update starts to kind of um crush your processor with this too much so like it's just all, all of this just is going to make the device better overall and i mean i actually really hope that apple starts to do more stuff in-house because i really do think it makes a a better device even if it might you know bring the regulators to their door more so than they already have been yeah uh, ben says in the chat it's almost as good as my iphone 12 pro max yeah it's, it's... yeah <laughs> wait seriously <laughs> yeah yeah holy crap <laughs> oh, ouch. That's but hey, no, I... the, with all those cameras, it looks like a spider's face. Yeah. That's crazy. But, that? yeah. It's, it's funny too. It's still a good phone. <laughs> it's not yeah. even a bad phone. It just apples that far ahead. Yeah, but oh well. Yeah. But uh let's uh go ahead and move on to the next story here. Um a drunk driver busted after iPhone calls cops after uh, after crash. Uh, a drunk driver was apprehended by the police after his iPhone automatically called emergency dispatch. It was a 46-year-old man from New Zealand who crashed his car into a tree at 11 a.m. Uh, after oh. detecting the crash, his iPhone Emit 14 immediately called 111. That's their emergency line in New Zealand. Uh, the driver spoke to the dispatcher and tells tells them that the police, you should not worry about it. <laughs> but 
but he sounded intoxicated, so they set a patrol to the scene. After attempting to conduct a sobriety test, the man became unruly, pushing the police and refusing to cooperate. So, uh, the, the moral of the story is: you have do you you got crash detection on your iPhone, on your iPhone, and you don't want to be caught. It's going to send reports, but you know there has been so many reports of of, of um, misleading uh, reports of it where people skiing and the ski slopes it's going off and crashing and um, lots of other things. So I think in this case, I thought this was a pretty good uh, good reason to protect us from those drunk drivers, don't you think? Yeah, especially at eleven a.m. Holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that's I mean, not that any time of the day is great to be, you know, or, uh, drunk driving, but like 11 a.m. That that's he was going to get caught at some point. <laughs> like he denied yeah. an iPhone. Yeah, my God. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank God for Apple okay. saving all of us from the drunk drivers. Yeah, I, I think I've just I think Jeff has some thoughts. First, don't drink and drive. Just yes. don't. Second, if you're drinking so much that that you're drunk at 11 in the morning um it it's okay to admit that you have a problem and go (laughs) seek help and then third if your iphone calls the police on you because you wrecked you crashed your car and you're drunk that's karma right there Mm -hmm. yeah That, that is um so that that just like that was a good moral of the story here. So let's go ahead and move on. Next story here. Um, Apple Pay Later service. There's been talking about it uh, for a while. It's it's getting ready for public release. Uh, it um, it was the most it, Apple Pay in itself is one of the most successful services for the company. Uh, and according to Bloomberg, the Apple is now expanding this test of the service to its retail employees, including indicating that the release to the general public is impe- is uh, in, 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 impending. Um, so Apple pay later allows customers to split up a purchase. Um, if you don't know, um, using Apple's pay it in four installments and paid over six weeks without any interest fees. And it's, uh, it's, it's actually backed by a new Apple subsidiary called Apple financing LLC, which means Apple is handling its own lending on its own. Hmm, I didn't even know that. Um, Hmm. so this is interesting. This this has been kind of dragging along for a while. We, I mean, there'd been discussion of the fact that, uh, with Goldman Sachs losing money on the Apple card, um, that they're uh, not losing money on the Apple card, uh, but they saying they were, they have, okay. been, yeah, uh, that's true. I mean, the news reports are saying they're losing money on the Apple, card. but they said they lost two billion dollars or two million dollars or whatever it was. What do you think, Jeff? I think that if you're going to write news stories about things like this, you should at least do enough research to know what you're writing about oh, that story. Crap. But this story is good because, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, this story. Okay, great. Um, this gives people another way to, um, to, uh, to purchase their Apple products. Um, and I can appreciate why some people are concerned that this is a predatory practice because you're, you're, creating another way for people to uh to get themselves into debt um that said um we're, is that really a thing that that uh that these companies need to be concerned about at what at what point do we as the consumers need to take responsibility and yes i mm-hmm. i appreciate that there are some people where they they are literally incapable of having that kind of of control over their lives mm-hmm. and it just does they're you know it's like they're they're not wired to be able to to do that that said yeah, yeah. um my guess is that this is going to to work out well for apple and the fact that they set up uh, a separate company that's uh, that's managing part of this that is no surprise to me either this is totally a common thing to do in uh in this space and it does not mean that Apple is getting a step closer to, to becoming their own financial institution. Yeah. I don't, yeah. The, I don't know if you guys ever seen the show Mr. Robot, but there's this like big company that's kind of supposed to be yeah. Apple and they even have a bank. And I'm like, yeah, that's where they're, yeah. that's where uh, they're that heading. Was the, that was a great show. So good. It's, it's the most underrated show. It's fantastic. I don't want to talk about it anymore though. Cause I could go on forever. Um, yeah. I, I agree with Jeff. I don't think this. I could see why people would say this is a predatory practice, but it's it's not. Student loans is a predatory 
Like they, that's yes. pressure because you need a college degree to get certain jobs. This is like, hey, I wanted to buy a new speaker and I'm going to do it in installments. That's not a need. It's a want. So it, I think you're right. Like it's in the hand of the consumer at that point to, you know, to, to decide what they want to do. Um, but it's kind of nice to have that option sometimes because sometimes, you know, you do, you do need to get something and, you know, times are tough or, you know, money's tight at the moment. And this can be a way to help people out. So I feel like it, this is overall a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Next story, uh, the app, Apple releases a MagSafe Duo firmware upgrade that won't fix any of its problems. I love that yeah. headline. I love that headline too. This is the uh, this is the best thing. Here. If you if are those few people out there who own this MagSafe Duo, one hundred twenty nine dollars. Yeah, one hundred twenty nine dollars. Let me make sure I mention that that uh, there was a new firmware version that was released, but unfortunately, it's not going to fix any things that's wrong with it. Um, and uh, the way you update it, you go to the settings app, tap general and about, and then uh, below carrier lock, you could tap the MagSafe dual charger and we'll see, they'll get the firmware for you. But uh, it didn't really fix any of its, of its problems. It was launched in 2020, so we're going almost three years since this was launched. Um, and it's nearly impossible to recommend it, but most people have given bad some bad reviews. And Mac World here, is, this article has given like two stars, that, that's how bad it is. Um, um, Again, they don't even know what it fixed, and it's not fixing the actual problems. So it's it's, it's probably with charging problems, connection problems. I mean, it's kind of sad. You spend all that kind of money, one hundred twenty nine dollars, it's pretty pricey for for something like that. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, hold. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it, this is like this is the kind of thing you buy Apple products for is the consistency of the user experience across their product line. And like reading this article is like you have to take the Apple Watch Ultra bands off in order to rest it on the MagSafe so it fits properly, that's not Apple. And then like the camera bump on the iPhone 14 is too big for it as well. So that's, this is just does not sound like an Apple made product. That's really not this. I don't know that's bad. That's really bad. Yeah, yeah no, it is. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? Um, I, I think maybe what Apple should have done is issued the firmware update to fix whatever it's actually fixing and announced version two of this product that uh, that holds the phone better, can hold uh, an Apple Watch Ultra or any other Apple Watch model without taking the bands off. And, you know, just like all the things you listed, Holden, that's what they should have rolled out. And, um, and yet here we are talking about an Apple product using terms like janky and two-star review. <laughs> and doesn't integrate well with their own products. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Apple, come on. Yeah, when yeah. You put, you put your name on this. I'm going to get um, an S22 Plus now. This is unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work with this charger just as well as my phone. There you go. Oh, gosh. Um Couple more stories here. Uh, United Healthcare, which was which was my former healthcare uh, insurance, uh, offers cash for your Apple Watch health data. This was actually in uh, Apple Insider. Our friend Andrew Orr wrote this. Um, new rewards program for United Healthcare is letting people earn money by completing various health goals using the Apple Watch or other wearable. With a giant catch, it's offering rewards up to a thousand dollars for eligible members, including spouses. Uh, com- com- competing on various daily health goals, and they can use it uh, with uh, tracking health, such as the iPhone and the Apple Health app. The money that members earn will be added to a prepaid debit card or deposit into a healthcare savings account to help to cover out-of-pocket medical costs. That's, uh, that's not bad. Um, so they're going to offer that through their site. Uh, I, I'd like to see other insurance companies do something like this and offer that kind of up to $1,000. I wouldn't mind, um, especially you know us that... Use their healthcare accounts pretty, pretty regularly. So, mm-hmm. what do you think, Jeff? I have a confession. <laughs> I saw the next article that you want to hit, and I was reading it and freaking out. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but I did hear it. <laughs> I saved the best for last. That's why. <laughs> yeah, oh my god! Uh, so that's foreshadowing, <laughs> people. I, I'm about <laughs> to to totally flip out. Um, anyhow, on. The uh, the paying for healthcare data or paying for the health tracking data, um, <clears throat> you know, what that tells me is that uh, is that these companies 
really want a lot more information for uh, research studies and they're not getting enough already. And so uh, now they're, they're offering the incentive of money and they'll get more uh, data that way. So if that's what it yep. takes to, to get information that's going to be useful for helping a wider uh, percentage of the population, then so be it. And uh, insurance companies are there for profit. So let's take a little bit back from them. Yeah. What do you think, Holden? Yeah, I think they're the reason I'm comfortable with this because the whole idea of like just how much data on us is out there. The reason I'm comfortable with this is at least we're getting uh, paid for our data and information on us. And I also think that the the um the requirements are are very um why am i drawing a blank on this very uh, easy word they're 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 not hard to overcome it, like it's uh, 5000 steps or more a day 15 minutes of activity track your sleep for 14 nights get a health screening get biometric screening uh, paperless billing and there's i think some other qualities says there's additional qualifying right. activities throughout the year but like that's not a hard bar to reach yeah. If you can't do 15 minutes of activity per day, I think that there's a problem and it's not your time. It's there's something else going on there. You, everyone yeah. should be able to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and now that, that, that Jeff teased the next and final, last uh, story for this week, uh, remastered Mist Mobile game now available on the iPhone and the iPad. It's Only been 30 years. It's been 30 <laughs> years since that popular puzzle game has, had first come out. And to celebrate the anniversary, developer uh, the developer announced today a, a launch of a new remastered Mist Mobile game that's available for the iPhone and the iPad. There's a there's a two minute video trailer on YouTube that's in the article on the on Mac Mac rumors, and uh, yeah, this is uh, pretty exciting. And uh, looks like uh, all of Mist Islands are accessible for no cost, but those who want to pay more to get unlocked uh, features to the Mist Island. Add on, of course. That's how gaming works. One time purchase, fourteen ninety nine, but there is a promotion that's going to drop down to nine ninety nine. So it's ready to download right now. I know. I know Jeff's probably already downloaded it before we even. Talk well, to I can't you. because my iPad's sitting over there. Uh, and, he's like, Great to go. <laughs> and, and since we're we're live right now, I felt like taking my headphones out and just leaving to go get my iPad <laughs> would be bad form. Um, that's a it's a fun game. Holy crap. When Mist came out on CD for the Mac, yep. I bought this game and uh and I I do you remember Apple's powered speakers? Yeah. From back in the day. Oh my I God. mean they were actually really good speakers. The original ones, not the second version. They were really good speakers. So I had those set up. I popped this disc in and the cyan logo comes up and the and the music starts to play. The hair on my arm stands up and I'm and I and I was captivated, and the game hadn't even started yet, and uh, I was just hooked. And then Riven came out, and I got that, and uh, I I I've just had this spot in my heart for the Mist series <laughs> since it launched. So yeah, as soon as we're done, and uh, and I can reach my iPad, I'm downloading the crap out of this <laughs> and paying whatever it says I need to pay for whatever <laughs> extra content. Playing all night long. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, hold on are you, are you you're a gamer you, you like this it's just something oh, you yeah. play um i so i actually have really wanted to play this game in particular after a few years ago i played a game called outer wilds and apparent I, i've never played mist but apparently outer wilds is like a spiritual like successor but not made by the same team it's kind of like mist in space i um, mean you're flying between planets and it's like larger scale um I, Outer Wilds is one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever played, and I've wanted to go back and play Mist. So I will do this, but I'm going to wait for it to come to Switch because I bet any money it'd come to Switch at some point. So I yeah, just checked the eShop to see if it was there, and it's not. But I, I, it's got to come at some point. Oh, yeah. So I, I'll play it on this. there. Uh, we did this, but uh, we got some uh, uh, comments in the chat. Kelly, how you doing, Kelly? Our Kelly Goman, our friend, is uh, Kelly just in there. Sent she... you a message. She sent me that I'm in the chat. Uh, her, oh my God, Miss! Uh, Go get your iPad now. <laughs> <laughs> I want a remastered marathon. Ben said, uh, and shut oh, up and take my money. No. 
Um, I think they did that. Oh, no, no, there's well, another world. Uh, Never mind. There's another world. Uh, they remastered Marathon, recently. Um, they open sourced it. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if it's updated to be uh, Apple Silicon native or not, but you can get the yeah. the whole marathon. Oh, series. yeah. I wonder, you're going to be able to download this onto a Mac, a Silicon Mac. We've got to try that because <laughs> it, it so, is. Uh, I bet they're blocking I, it. Marathon was made by Bungie, who made like Halo and, and that, yes. right? I'm pretty sure it's the same company. They're owned by Sony now, and Sony is not friendly to that kind of thing. So I'm, I don't know. I'm well, I, I heard a little pessimistic that Sony on that was one. letting them run as if they're an independent company. So maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, by the way, I still things. have a. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, and what's that other words? Against Microsoft over Halo because yeah. I watched the the keynote at Macworld Expo where the Halo people or the Bungie people were on stage and they showed the Halo demo okay. as a Mac product. And then right after that, Microsoft bought the company and killed the Mac version. And uh, uh yeah. <laughs> Man, some things don't change at Microsoft. That's their thing now. Is they just buy up companies and, and then that, that, <laughs> for their for their gaming division. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's let's move on to the topics this week. That was the news. Um, beta. There's nothing in beta. I, I actually can say it's been almost two weeks now. There's been no beta release as of yet. Uh, uh, don't know what the, the delay is. I'm so kind of surprised. It, you know, Apple usually isn't that uh, delayed with beta versions. So still on sixteen point three. And iOS and iPad OS, and um, I know they did release an update to TV OS uh, and HomePod OS. That's right, they did 16.3.1 for those two devices uh, to fix some bugs. I don't know if you uh, installed that on your HomePod. Uh, I, I'm holy crap! I should pay attention to uh, to this show all the time because uh, there's stuff like this. I don't think I'm running the new updates. We'll fix that right now. Yeah. So that the, the uh, TVOS as uh, well is on sixteen dot three dot one. I forgot to put that in the show notes, and I just thought it at the top of my head here. Um, so, yep, make sure you get those installed. Uh, apparently, I did. It or probably just automatically did it. So, um, so other than that, not much else to talk about in that, in that arena. Um, what I want to do is I had a couple of products that I've uh, that I, I got to see at uh, CES, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it a few weeks ago when uh, CES happened uh, about a month ago here. Uh, um, so I've got a couple products here that I'd like to, to talk about. I have them in my hands here and uh, I'll give a bit of a review. Um, I know I know I did this one also on uh, the Mac show, uh, this one here. This is uh, made by a company called the Pluggable. This is it here. This is the, uh, I have it on camera. Uh, this is the 8-in-1 USB-C docking station for an iPad. It's got a stand. It's got a 100-watt pass-through uh, on the sides here. Wow. Uh, and and uh, it's got the two USB-A ports on this side. And uh, it's very sturdy. I see when I'm moving it on the camera here, but uh, that, it, that it's really tight in, in a good position, so you can play it, put it in a, in a good position. I like the way it, it sits. It also will work with the iPhone. I mean, I've been using my iPhone here on it, and it's been, uh, you know, the, sitting on uh, pretty nicely. So it's um, really nice. It, it's got pass-through uh, charging, so you can uh, just you can plug it in um, and and do a full charge of of the iPad or or, or the iPhone if you want it. Um, so. It's uh, not not a bad little device, uh, and it's only uh, sixty nine bucks, which I think is a really good deal. Uh, in fact, when I bought it uh, last week, I, I ended up buying this. Uh, it was uh, forty nine dollars because they had a twenty dollar off uh, coupon on Amazon. So, um, so check this one out. I think this is a really cool little device. Uh, we have uh, Amazon links in the show notes here. You can uh, you can purchase right from there. Um, and uh, I thought that was a Real cool food first device. Then I, I I know uh, I, I thought I might have spent Jeff's money early uh, when we talked about it on the Mac show, but maybe not. So I, you know, I actually was hovering my finger over my my uh, trackball button for <laughs> by now, and then ultimately walked myself back from that one. I have so many stands already. I know I I do too, but I th- I thought this one was nice. Um. Couple hubs that I I, I also I, I visit with Pluggable that they're 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 a great company. They got some other great the docks too. Um, Kensington's a great uh, another product that, that makes great stuff here. This is the 
the Kensington uh, iPad and Mac USB-C dual C 4K HDMI docking station with Qi charging. So you see this on here, I'm on a camera. It's got a, a, a flat surface here, so you can just take your iPhone and, and, and it, it, it Qi charges while you have it. And there is a switch that switches between um, uh, the power of the Qi charging as well as uh, this is a, a full pass-through. Um, they put the cable here for storage. When you pull this cable off, this will plug right into your Mac or your iPad. Uh, and it also has uh, two HDMI uh, ports on here. It's got an Ethernet, uh, a gigabit Ethernet. And then on the other side here, you got USB two USB A's, and then there's the uh, the power pass through uh, through uh, with the, the USB C uh, connector. Um, it's hundred twenty seven dollars. Got a link up for Amazon in there as well. Not a bad little device um, for for what it does, and you know something someone who travels and want to have a nice simple way to be able to uh, sit right at your desk and be able to charge your iPhone. Um, but she charge, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, it fits the yeah. iPhone fourteen Pro. It looks like. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, as far as charge, uh, charging, charging. Maybe maybe Apple should uh, um, study that product. Yeah, yeah. Some reverse engineering. <laughs> yeah, you would you think. think it's the schematics for an iPhone 14 Pro and like figure out the dimensions of it too. That would be helpful for Apple as well. They could yeah. probably find someone that could get those. Maybe, yeah. maybe. And then um, finally, I have a third product here. This is also by Kensington. This is a uh, a, a, a USB four hub for MacBooks and. You probably you could use it with the iPad too, as it's got the USB uh, C connector on it. Um, this is a, a small little guy here, so it's as I have on camera, it's uh, not not a bad looking unit here. And this has uh, the 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 power pass through, and it's got uh, two HDMI uh, ports here, so you can do two, two plugs and an Ethernet uh, gigabit, and then you got uh, uh, two USB A ports. Um, this one's around the same price as the Qi charging one. So, but you know, I think for, for portability, this one is, is I think a little nicer because that one is a little bulkier, but um, not a bad little unit. And again, Kensington makes great products. I mean, you really do. I mean, I've got all sorts of docking stations that I've had from them and, and others. So um, I thought these were, uh, these are great products that they make and check them out. All, all three uh, items I, I just discussed are, I think there's in the show notes for Amazon to, to take a look at them. And um yeah, I don't. So, if you guys have any other thoughts on those products, we'll uh, go ahead and move on. Um, so, uh, I wanted to talk. I have a couple of different topics here I wanted to bring up. Um, one of them is uh, streaming services. Uh, there's been a lot of activity in the streaming services arena for this these last um, uh, couple of weeks, couple of months, for that matter. Uh, and uh, a, num- uh, a number of uh, interesting. Uh, Announcements happened this past week. Uh, so HBO Max, if, as everybody probably knows, that they were, they were merging with Discovery, um, and they, they merged those services together. Uh, but they're they're still running as separate entities. Uh, and and they had originally announced that what they were going to do is they wanted to merge merge the HBO Max um, service and the Discovery Plus service uh, and put it all in one in place. Well, this week they announced that they're it is being unbundled. It's going to be. Um, now, a la carte, they're realizing that, you know, they're, they're probably going to lose all those people who are paying the lower priced cost for, for Discovery Plus because that's like a four ninety nine or six ninety nine uh, service. And there's a lot, a lot of great shows that Discovery has on there. And I, I was a subscriber of that. But you got to put, you know, so you got to put a limit on some of the services you have. There's so many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this is a big win for a la carte TV because, um, you know, not, you're not being forced to, 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 to actually – have to have both of these services. You can have one or the other, or if you want both, you can you can buy both and and it'll work at. HBO still has some some work to do with the HBO Max app. I can tell you that because it's still not not as user friendly as it should be. And I see Holden smiling. Have you have you been using the, the HBO app? Yeah, I've been watching The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's just not a user friendly app. So, but uh, it's it's interesting to see where uh, where this goes. Um, as far as uh, as far as these services go, um, what, what do you think, Jeff? I mean, do you have HBO? Um, yes, and uh, like Holden, um, I am devouring The Last of Us. Um, yeah, I got to watch that show. So good, you really do. Yeah, yeah. Did you play the game, Jeff, or is this your introduction to the story? This is my introduction to the story. Okay, and I, it's, and I'm it's loving it. an, yeah, the games are uh, remarkable. Yeah. I've played them both at least five times. They're incredible. Are they available on the Mac? No, no. Yeah, that's sad. The first one's available? on PC now, I think. Oh, okay. Well, then, it's on PlayStation then only. 
I'll, I'll enjoy it through uh, uh, through the TV series. Uh, doing the unbundling or the the never bundling, as I guess would be more accurate. Right. Good, because um, right. like like you said, there's there's so much out there, and people can only pay for so much, and um, giving people the option of of getting either service or both as a bundle. I think that's a much better way to do it. Yeah, I agree. So mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, yeah. uh, other story that, that came out this week in the streaming is uh, this, got, the, this Disney Plus lost subscribers for the very first time. I mean, they have like something like 100 million subscribers. It's crazy. Um, but uh, they lost to almost 2.4 million subscribers in the, in the three months ending December 31st of 2022. Um, and the, the subscriber base of its uh, streaming service fell for the first time since it launched in 2019. Well, you know, it came out pre-pandemic, and then uh, during uh, during that time after in 2020, the, lots of people were watching uh, streaming service, that's for sure. So mm-hmm. their their subscriptions went way up. I mean, I've been a, a, a commercial-free subscriber for a while. I think, it, I think it's a great service. And, you know, Star Wars, come on, you got... You know, Got Marvel, you got lots of lots of great shows on there that you can, can't not. I mean, then some people are you know tend to you know cancel for a while, and then when the new stuff comes out, like Mandalorian's coming out next month, so we got to be ready for that. So, um, uh, uh, but I'm not I'm not all surprised this is happening. Uh, and and you know, and then Disney also announced layoffs, so they're they're working with, with that as well. So the, uh, things are dropping in, in all all the services. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people who just will subscribe while I'm watching a show. And then like after that Last of Us is over, I'm going to cancel HBO and then I'll go to, yeah. you know, Disney. But like I haven't seen Andor yet, for example. I really want to yeah. see Andor. I'm not like opposing oh, it, but it's amazing. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to wait for the Mandalorian to come out so I can, you know, two birds, yeah. one stone once, you know, just watch sure. them both at the same time. There you go. That, sure. I get that. Uh, Dave, I think that you hit on an important point, which is the the whole pandemic thing. Right. All the services increased during the lockdown phase. And now that we're in a phase where where people are more comfortable going out uh, more than they were, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that we're seeing subscriptions drop off. It doesn't concern me either because we're, we're mm-hmm. talking about uh, about services that have so many subscribers that uh losing a couple million well yeah, that's a lot of people that's that's not a showstopper um nah. yeah that's that's peanuts so um so uh yeah uh, and we're going to continue on in future episodes want to talk a little about streaming because i think it's it's important especially with T- apple tv the apple tv device works really well with a lot of streaming services and uh you know apple tv plus we talk about that all the time uh hardware yeah, Apple TV Plus by far, and I I own them all. Well, not all of them, but I do have a Roku and I do have a Google TV. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I and, yeah, I I'm still being an idiot because you're saying Apple TV Plus, and I was thinking Apple, and actually, or Apple TV, and I blame Apple for this because they can't yeah, figure out how branding. to create distinct names for their products. Yeah, it, it, it just gets confusing. So, yeah, um, so we'll go to continue on to cover that kind of stuff. So. Uh, but uh, our In Touch with Mac uh, segment this week, uh, Jeff, you finally have moved to an M2 MacBook Pro. And I was excited to hear about this when you were telling us that uh, you're you're finally going to give in and then turn, get get that put, uh, Intel Mac uh, to pasture and no longer have to listen to a fan revving every day. And so the, what's, what is your initial thoughts? Which, know, uh, which, 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 uh, which model did you get? I, I got the 14-inch 12-core M2 Pro. Great. And, uh, and the reason I got it now um, wasn't so much because I, I felt like, oh my God, I have to replace my Intel Mac because it just doesn't work. It's still mm-hmm. a great machine and it's still a great workhorse. It's just, we hit a point where if I'm going to sell the computer, waiting any longer, I'm going to start losing value in the machine, I felt. Yep. So yep. It, it doing it now was really a financial decision. Um, and, uh, and what I did for the setup was uh, um, I took my time machine drive and migrated my data over 
from from that to the new computer and then started installing apps. So right. um, uh, that that was a decision that I made because, well, first, um, following Holden's lead, I, uh, I, I was able to start much cleaner that way, but also going from Intel to, uh, to Apple Silicon, I didn't want to risk installing anything that was going to be Intel only that I didn't want to have. And this way I was able to go and make sure that I was getting the, the Apple Silicon native versions of apps where whenever possible. And it's amazing how many apps I chose not to reinstall. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, I've been mm -hmm. playing around with a MacBook Air and I, there's, I mean, well, granted, I have a one terabyte in my 16 inch on this MacBook Air only has 256. So I'm not going to be copying everything over right. between those two machines. So got to be selective of what I install. But uh, yeah, you're right. And it really gives you some thoughts of, of why do I have, when's the last time I've used this app? And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm notorious for that. I'm looking on here. I mean, we have set app and we, we install that stuff and there's all kinds of other apps that we install. And when was the last time you used it? So, uh, I'm yeah. sure hold here the same way. You, you probably have a lot oh, of yeah. apps on there. You don't, don't even use. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty that starting up as new. It's like, Oh yeah, I don't ever use day one. Why did I keep that on there? <laughs> yeah. I'd love yeah. to use it more, but I don't. So it just doesn't need to be there. Yeah. yeah. I have a lifetime sub sub subscription with them. So I probably should use it more. Um, yeah, you should. I mean, journaling is important. Paid for it, just use it. Yeah. Um, I I have to say this is a, a really sweet machine, and yeah. uh, and I can't get used to yet the whole thing that my fans aren't running all the time. Um, <laughs> yep. It's uh, yeah, it's it... okay. Here's the thing that's weird to me. I feel like the keyboard is uh is clunky and not because it feels weird i mean it it's you know it's a laptop keyboard and it's and it feels fine it's the fact that it doesn't have a touch bar seeing yeah. the row of buttons across um, the top that i don't use but i would use the uh customized controls in the touch bar i don't mm -hmm. have that anymore and it's just really weird yeah you get used to it but i know exactly what you mean i am a huge lover of the touch bar i thought it was fantastic i loved it yeah I'm very upset it's gone touch bar like being in the notes yeah. app and just being able to like say oh this is now a checklist and then just tap the checklist on the touch bar the function keys will never replace that i i agree and i get that for many people that the touch bar was not the right tool for them for them and yeah, and, yeah, same. And I do appreciate that uh, that Apple has a lot of blame in the Touch Bar needing to go away because they they didn't do a good job of uh, actually supporting it. Um, um. So, but yeah, I mean this this is a uh, uh, a really nice computer, and um, um, the fact that I can actually take in some cases, iOS apps and run them here. I, I like to have that option. I have no idea if I'm actually going to do that with any. Well, no, I am. I'm going to install Ice Cubes for iOS yeah. on my Mac. Mastodon client. Mm -hmm. It's Because that's a solid uh, Mastodon app. Um, are you going to try LumaFusion? Um, no. Even yeah. though I know it'll run on here, it's the wrong interface for me. It's that's it. not how I use LumaFusion. So I am quite content with that running just on my iPad. There you go. So yeah, well, um, good report. Glad that uh, you finally uh, joined our world of uh, the uh, M series uh, silicon processors. It's uh, it's been a dream. It's been the wonderful not hearing fans anymore. I mean, I still have an Intel fan machine here that I use for for. We're playing around with stuff and like that thing revved up the other day. I'm like, oh my God, that, that thing's ridiculous. <laughs> and I never yes. realized we dealt with it for all those years. <laughs> You'll run into a new issue with battery, which is you will run out of charge when you forget to charge it because you never have to charge it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that happens to me a few times. You know, I, I thought I was going to encounter that um, a, a little while before the show. 
I realized I hadn't had the MagSafe cable plugged in for two days. And I thought, holy crap, I need to charge this machine because I don't want it to die on me in the middle of the podcast. Right. And then I, then I realized <laughs> that there's a little lightning bolt on the battery icon in my menu bar. <laughs> yeah, it's been charging through, through my CalDigit <laughs> Thunderbolt dock the whole time. And it didn't even <laughs> occur to me. And, um, and all I can say is that I really hope I can get by in life on my looks, but I have a feeling I'm kind of screwed. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, Jeff. That's, that is funny though. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, uh, I, I was feeling pretty lame and thinking I should not ever tell anyone about this. So I immediately put it on, uh, on Mastodon. <laughs> it's like the moments where you're like, you're on the phone with someone and you're like, wait, I just need to write that down on my phone. Where is it? And then you're like wandering the house trying to find your phone and it's right up to your face. It's like one of those kind of moments. Everyone does it. Everyone does it. Yeah. Where are yeah. your glasses? Well, they're on your head. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's why I can see right now. Yes. But hold right. on, I have to put my glasses on so I can go look for my glasses. I've yep. never done that. And I'm going to <laughs> stick to that story. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got it. And I wanted to make sure um, everybody was aware of it. And it was a good uh, good discussion to, to know that uh, you're, uh, you're, you've joined the M series world. Um, I, so. I am glad to have this machine. Yeah. <clears throat> So I've got a few tips I want to go through. I mean, I, I know everybody enjoys having hearing about some tips that, that we find here. And um, one of them I want to talk about was uh, the iPhone dark mode uh, that you can actually toggle. Now, you know you can do that in the control center. You have a button there. You can toggle the, the um, uh, dark mode uh, uh, on and off uh, from there. But uh, you kind of want to have that automated. And a lot of times it's, you know, it's not as uh, as good to, uh, to do it manually so but if you go into the uh, the settings and then you go under display and brightness um you'll you'll see the appearance where it's light and dark and you can set it to automatic um and there there is uh options where you actually can uh, have it light until sunset so it looks at the time um and uh it does give you that option as well but you also can go in there and go into the appearance schedule so if you go into uh, under automatic you can go under options and then you can switch it to either a custom schedule or you can do it from sunset to sunrise so it could be in dark mode uh in in sunset and sunrise will be in, in light mode or vice versa uh you go into the custom uh schedule you can actually set specific times what time do you want it light what time do you want it dark um and i, I kind of like that 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 gives you an option of being able to um uh, change dark mode in the way you want i i keep dark mode on all the time i'm actually i like it i don't know what you guys think but um i i prefer dark mode all the time but there are some people who like to switch it out you know depending you know everybody's eyes are different than what they look at um have you guys uh, use that at all are you do you use dark mode so i go i go between um i incorporate them with my focus modes there's a focus filter and you can say when i'm in this focus yeah. mode make it light make it dark and i use that so when i'm at work i know i'm in work mode it's light mode um, if I'm in yeah. like Twitter, it's like it's light mode Twitter. I can't be here right now. It's kind of like a yeah. like a visual reminder. Um, but then yeah. when I'm out of work, I I like to keep it in dark mode. I, I would prefer to keep it in dark mode all the time, but I find it's kind of nice to have that little visual reminder because it's very easy to get distracted. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Jeff? The only device I have that I like to use in dark mode is my iPhone, and I set it there and just leave it. But here's the like thing. me. So uh, several months ago, um, I, I was uh, doing, I was with family and I, I don't even remember the exact circumstances, but uh, uh, maybe it was my niece doing something on my iPhone and, um, and she didn't like dark mode. She turned it off and I never turned it back on. And I didn't even realize for days that she had turned off dark mode and I use my iPhone all the time. <laughs> and that's when I realized there's enough stuff that doesn't go into dark mode that I wasn't noticing. And if I went that long without, uh, without dark mode on and not realizing it, maybe I just don't need to turn it back on. And yeah. so I like mm -hmm. to say I use dark mode on my iPhone all the time, but I have literally no devices in dark mode. 
exactly. on that note of like some apps or like websites don't use dark mode you can't do this for for apps but for websites there's an app called noir it's a safari extension and it will just turn a web page into dark mode for you it's very nice so if you're not yeah. as particular as jeff or if you are less particular um than jeff on on the dark mode thing then you can you're more particular than Jeff. I get that all mixed up. If you're more particular right. um, than Jeff on the whole dark mode thing, not, you, you if need you it. don't have a neuroses like me, <laughs> no, I think you would need to have neuroses to want to like like to want to use more and make sure it's always it's always like like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and the next tip I wanted to give is uh, in Spotlight Search. A lot of times you go in Spotlight Search and you actually search for an app on your iPhone and to find it. But the problem is. Uh, before iOS 16, you you when you would search it, you could launch it, but you'd never know where the heck it is afterwards, and then you have to go search for it again. So now what you can do is when you go into Spotlight and you actually search for an app, you see it come up, you can tap and hold it, and then you can drag it uh, down into your home on your home screen, put it in your position, and being able to have it right where you want it. Uh, you weren't able to do that before, or you you know a lot of people would do is they would go over into the app library on the on the far right, and they're when they're when they're uh, scrolling over the, the app library is nice too, where it's, it's all kind of organized but this way you know th this is an app you think you're going to use a lot more often this gives you a much easier way of being able to drag that actual app onto a home on, on one of the on home screen pages and put it right in place that's a great tip i had no idea about that and you're right like yeah. dragging all the way from the right in the app library can be a little annoying sometimes because yeah, it always exactly. creates that extra empty screen, no matter. It was what. always annoying, and it was always annoying that you would search for that, and then and then like, oh god, and I gotta find it again, you know. And then it's mm -hmm. always buried somewhere. So yeah, I think I think that's a good tip for everybody to know that uh, you know, move your apps when you want to into a place you want. You know, mm -hmm. I love this tip, and it annoys me at the same time because clearly <laughs> I have issues tonight. No, it it uh, it annoys me because. These are so useful, and yet Apple's discovery ability for features is so opaque. How would the average iPhone user ever know about something like this? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is definitely a highlight tip uh, uh, of uh, the week here for the show, and uh, I definitely check that out because I think it's something that's really, really important. This um, is what the Tips app should be useful for, but I feel like it's yeah. a useless app. At least I haven't gone into it so long. Maybe this isn't there. I don't know. The but. Tips app feels to me more like uh, like a feature advertisement, not right. like something to, <laughs> yeah. to help you discover mm -hmm. how to do things. It's it, yep. it's it's not tips in the way that it should be. Mm -hmm. Um. So another tip uh, on CarPlay. So those of you who have CarPlay in your car, um, you actually can organize the, the apps as well as remove the apps um, in in the listing. And the way to do that is you go into Settings uh, under General, and then you tap uh, CarPlay. And um, when you go into that list, you can tap Customize. And then once you get into there, uh, you uh, you can tap Add or Delete button remove apps and then you can tap and drag each app to have them in the order you want them to appear on your screen in your car um very simple to, to, uh, when your iphone next connects to to your car you uh, it'll sync it and then it'll have all the apps in the position that you want um and a lot of times there's apps that i mean you want to try every app on a carplay because there are a lot of apps that aren't available on carplay like you know specifically like youtube they don't going to put that on there because you know of course you're not going to be watching youtube videos I, I would like i would rather have it i mean they have youtube music so you can listen to music but um they're not not the actual YouTube app. Of course, they're going to not allow that. But um, but it's a nice feature that, that CarPlay has that you, you can actually customize it the way you want and you just do it right into your iPhone, right from the settings. Yeah, I ever got That's rid cool. of Teams because why would I ever use Teams in my car? No, I, I, I have Teams on mine because, uh, because it works. So, you know, a lot of times you know, I just go in the CarPlay. It's, oh, I want to join the meeting. I just tap Teams right from the, from the screen and connect. Are, are you getting yeah. paid? For for your time doing the Teams meeting in your car. Well, when I'm late, I have to get drive to work, and I got to make sure I'm in the meeting at a current right, time. I'll that's what I, that. That, 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 that's what I would do. It Zoom is also <laughs> available in the CarPlay uh, as well, and I think WebEx is too. But no, you know any any of those okay. types of because yeah, people are the yeah. Those people is if, when uh, you get a WebEx call, it immediately crashes. Yeah, car computer <laughs> and crashed. the engine locks up. <laughs> Exactly. Your Tesla, it just like starts to pull over. Oh, Tesla wouldn't do this, but like it starts to do the whole pull over thing. 
right? He said yeah. a self-driving car or self-driving car can do that. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I thought those two, two good tips, uh, to have this, uh, this week. Um, uh, uh, but uh, we had a lot. To, we went over a lot this week, and uh, we're right near time here. So I wanted to go ahead and uh, wrap it up for this week. But thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Um, so let's go ahead and wrap up. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address: feedback at intouchbios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at intouchbios. Support the show by buying me a coffee at intouchbios.com/coffee. We would really appreciate it. You can become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com slash in touch with iOS. We have two tiers available to support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe at, uh, so you're notified when we live stream, which is on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash in touch with iOS, where you can watch the, the show live as as many are this, this week, as well as uh, you can listen to past shows and watch the, the, the previous live shows. Um, if you want to also visit In Touch With iOS Magazine on Flipboard, where many of the topics we discuss are flipped into that magazine, uh, the, the link is in our show notes. You can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, including Pocket Casts, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, many others. But better yet, go to, your, go to our website, which is intouchwithios.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Mastodon.cloud at DaveG65. I'm also on Twitter at DaveG65, and of course at In Touch with iOS. Uh, Holden Depardo, thank you so much for being here. It was always a blast to have you on the show. Where can people Thanks for find having you? me? I am at Twitter. Uh, sorry, at Holden Depardo on Twitter sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm there. Okay, great. I uh, appreciate you being here. And Jeff Gammon, so glad you made it back. We missed you, and I'm glad you're here. And, uh, where can people find you? I missed you too. Um, I'm Jay Gamut on all the socials. And um, um, the, the ones that I'm most active on right now are Mastodon and Instagram. And uh, let's see, shows. Um, okay, so when, when I'm not actively trying to avoid Ben and Kelly in the chat, who are still yes. pressuring me <laughs> to buy a, a Nintendo Switch. Um, <laughs> let's see, Tuesday evenings. On, oh, gee, man. <laughs> Tuesday evenings, Mac Voices Live, Chuck Joyner Show. Uh, Thursdays on the big show. And then, uh, and then here with you, Dave, on the Enablers show. I mean, in touch with iOS. <laughs> and then Fridays on the Mac show, and then also on the Context Machine with Brian Chaffin. And uh, um, yeah, and, and apparently, oh yeah, you, you want me to buy a Switch? Patreon, buy me a coffee. I'm Jane Gavin yeah. on both. There you go. <laughs> that new tier, three forty nine ninety nine. That's right. And, and- yeah. Be sure to listen to the context machine because uh, that was a good episode this last uh, week with uh, you talking about your Mac and and Brian razzing you the whole way. <laughs> it's you know, actually do go listen to it because it's it's awesome yeah. because it starts off with me saying and it's amazing how smooth the whole transition was and then it's like a needle dragging across the record and Brian's going on about this does not match with the text message chain we had going on while you're doing this and i learned a lot about human nature that day because he was right it was good it was good go check that out thanks again for both you being here thank you for listening thank you to the chat room uh, youtube.com slash in touch with ios so i'm so glad everybody was there and kelly and, and guy and ben and paul and many others and thanks for joining us this week and uh, for those that were listening uh, uh, after the fact, we're glad you were here, and we'll be back next time. Talk again soon.